Hello everyone, in this video I want to go through a few basic mathematical procedures. I noticed that a lot of people uh, in middle school and high school, uh, you're not really taught the fundamentals of linear algebra, well, in the North American curriculum at least, but I noticed that uh, many students, because I've done tutoring in the past and I've noticed that many students are really inefficient when they try to solve sets of equations. In this video, I want to go through a a very widely known concept, and if you've probably graduated from university in mathematics and stuff, you this will be really like basic stuff to you, but I want to go through the basics of matrices. And when you use these matrices, they allow you to solve sets of linear equations really easily, and using properties of matrices like the determinant, for example, you'll be able to see how well solvable your 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 problem is when you make these equations. So let's say you have a set of equations, like maybe you'll get something like 2x plus 5y equals 18, I'm just making this up, and maybe 5x plus 8y equals 5. So here we have two sets of linear equations, and they have two variables. Usually in high school you're taught that x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable for when you're graphing this. Because this is a two-dimensional problem, you can just plot it and it'll be easy to visualize. You'll just see two lines, one equation for each line, and you can just find the point of intersection that will be the solution. But graphing it will actually take a while, even though it's simple, it'll still take you some time to find the slope and plot it out and you have to set up the axes. The most commonly used method is substitution in high school, where you just isolate one equation in terms of one variable, you plug it in, you get the value of that variable, and then you reverse substitute. And that's a systematic way to do it as well. But in this video, I'm going to show the high school students how to use matrices. So when you go into higher levels of math, you really stop using y, and then you'll usually actually have variables, like in engineering, maybe one will be like flow rate and another one might be pressure or something like that. But in a lot of our textbooks, we'll systematically call them x1 and x2. It's the same thing, it's just different labels. But it's just a more systematic way of, of labeling them. And then when you want to solve a basic matrix equation like this, we just call it the form ax equals b, where a is a matrix consisting of these variables. Now you have to be careful when you're assembling the matrices. So you have to be careful because you need the columns to be lined up carefully like this. If you mix it up, if you put like 5x2 plus 2x1 and then you, you write that into the matrix, it'll be in the wrong order. You have to make sure that when you're casting the matrix, you do so systematically like this. And when you do it like this, you know, you can just write these as the coefficients of the variables that you have. Okay, x equals x1. X, and the x matrix is just assembling these variables together. You can just call them whatever you want, really. And then the, the matrix of coefficients that are on this end, we have as so. So when you plug these back in, you'll have this equation that you want to solve. And you might be thinking, hey, why am I doing this when I can use substitution? But you'll see that this will be a very systematic way to do it, especially when you move on to higher dimensions, such as three variables. So before we move further, we can find the determinant of the matrix. Let's say you have a generic matrix. I'm going to call it A again. And I'm just going to be putting like very generic elements in this. So for this kind of matrix, I'm just calling it AIJ. Like I is usually denoted as the row number and J is denoted as the column number. This is just a generic way that we write the elements within a matrix. To find the determinant of a generic matrix, you need to use this formula, it's A11, A22, minus A21, A... 
Well, that's a silly mistake. <laughs> that's supposed to be A12. Because it's in row 1, column 2. <laughs> but yeah, you use this matrix to find the determinant, and you'll end up with a number, a scalar number. But this number will determine, like... It'll tell you the, the properties of the matrix. Usually it's only a problem if it's 0. Because when this is 0, it means you can't invert the matrix, and that means you can't solve for the for the variables x1 and x2 properly. So if it's 0, you might have a problem. It might indicate that the problem is has not been set up that well. Or if, if you were the one setting up these equations in the first place, it might indicate that you made a mistake on your part. So if you see that, you have to go check your equations again and make sure make sure that the problem is set up well. So in this case, let's actually find the determinant of that. It'll end up being 2 or 8 minus 5, 5. And it will be 16 minus 10 equals 6. Okay. So it's non-zero, so that means we can actually solve it. This is getting a little bit messy, so let me rewrite these equations really quickly again. Okay, so we had the form We have the form AX equals B. AX equals B. But what we really want is X. Those are the variables that we just wanted to solve from the set of linear equations. So what we can actually just do is invert it, like invert the matrix A like so. And You'll have to go through the steps to actually prove this, but in the end, you'll see that the dimensions of the matrix, the matrices work out. When you multiply matrices, the let's say you're multiplying two matrices together, it means that the columns of the first matrix has to equal the rows of the second matrix. Like over here, we'll have 2 by 2. Remember the notation I was showing earlier that it's row times the columns. So A is 2 by 2, and B is actually 2 by 1. And this is a good way to see if you also messed up forming the matrices. Um, so over here, as I said, this needs to match this for if you're multiplying two of them together. So the number of the columns in the first matrix being multiplied has to match the number of rows of the second matrix being multiplied. So if you have that, then you're good. And then, yeah, you just cross these out and you'll find out what the right-hand side matrix will be. It'll actually be a 2 by 1 matrix, two rows and one column. So we need to invert A. And to invert the matrix, you actually need 1 over the determinant of it. And you actually need a formula over here. You'll need to put D, negative B, negative A, oops, negative C, and A. And this is actually for a matrix that's A, B, C, D. Some people find this notation a little bit easier to work with, so if you have to memorize this formula, you can just use this instead of memorizing all of the 1s and 2s I was showing before. But what you just need to do is, when you look at these ma these elements on the diagonal, you flip them and then you just put negative signs on these two. Again, you can prove this, but I won't be showing that in the course of this video. I'm more interested in just showing you the applied mathematics and being able to solve something really quickly. So we had a determinant earlier, we know that it was 6. Okay. So over here in our problem, 
we had a equals to five five h. Okay, it'll be one over six times, and this will be just a scalar multiplying by the matrix. Scalar is just it'll be a factor that'll be applied to all of the elements within the matrix. It won't be matrix multiplication because this is like a, a one by one matrix. It's just it goes to all of the elements inside. So this one will be we switch those and we apply negatives to the rest of them equals and yeah it'll, it'll be a little bit messy it'll be 8 over 6 maybe 5 over 6 and 2 over 6 and then you can simplify these ones Four over three, five over six, six and one over three. Okay. And as we said earlier, we need to find x, so we have to multiply by matrix B. Uh, B was eighteen and five. So really, it's just well. Eighteen and five. So you'll actually have to do it like you have to do a bit of matrix multiplication over here. The first element will be eighteen, and then the next one will be. This times that, so you have to multiply element-wise by the that times that. It's like, imagine doing like a a karate chop with one hand like that, one hand like that. That's what I used to always use. And yeah, it's it's gonna be a little bit messy. Sometimes you have to get your hands messy when you're doing equations. And yeah, so you'll have column matrix with two elements in it. So the first element will be that x1 that we used earlier and then the next one will be x2. These were the two variables we were trying to use. Or if you don't like the notation x1, x2, you can just say that the top one is x and the bottom one is y. And then we can plug this into a calculator and then we can solve it pretty easily. So actually, if I open up a calculator, I like to use a program called MATLAB. It makes things really easy for me. We can just plug in these numbers and solve them. What do we have? Okay, so in the end, we'll get the value of x1 to be 19.8333, like, that can obviously be expressed as a fraction, so if your professor or teacher wants the answers to be exact, you should find the fraction version of it. Many calculators have that option as well. And the second one, which will be x2 or y, depending on what you want to call it, it'll be 13.333 again. That can be expressed as a fraction really easily. And yeah, you solved it. But why did I end up wanting to do all of this? It's because it's a systematic, you know? I like finding the determinant. With the determinant, you can see if someone's trying to mess with you. Why I was in one interview once, and a lot of these interviews, they like to use... Uh, if there's any uh, testing phase of the interview, sometimes they like to filter out the candidates early on by using IQ tests. And a lot of IQ tests are... So you'll see a lot of them... Uh, some of them will be like simple arithmetic, but there'll be arithmetic that you'll have to solve 50 questions in maybe less than 10 minutes. In that kind of situation, you have to be extremely fast. This way of solving two equations with two variables is actually an extremely fast way to do it if your calculator has matrix functions in it. And many of the calculators that you see that are allowed to be used on, let's say, an engineering exam, a lot of them will have matrix functions. They might not, and a lot of teachers, they don't like the graphing calculators, but there are lots of calculators that'll have matrix, that allow for matrix operations like these, but without graphing. 
And yeah, all you have to do is just make these matrices into your calculator and solve them, and you will have solved it really easily. It's just really fast and really systematic. It's easy for 2x2, two two, but you can also do it with 3x3 three three matrices, and you can decompose the 3x3 three three matrices into little 2x2 two, two two determinants to find the determinant of a higher order matrix like that, like a 3x3 three three one, and we'll get into that in the future videos. So let's say you actually want to do this on a calculator. This one is a graphing calculator, but it was the only one I could find on a free trial on the Casio website. So usually your calculator will have an option to input matrices. See matrices over there. Now we're in a matrix mode. Okay, so let's matrix A, B, the original matrix we had a while ago. We need 2 by 2. Good. And let's input our values. So let's say you're doing an IQ test or something that allows calculators. You can go through these kinds of problems really fast instead of doing substitution. Which will take like maybe 5-10 minutes even, and you're really prone to arithmetic mistakes. This, really easy and systematic. So that's good. Okay, and then we get matrix B, which will be 18 and 5. Let's do that. It'll be 2 by 1. 18 and 5. Okay. And now we. So those ones were A and B. Matrix A. Okay, there we go, we finally inverted it. Then we multiply it. Uh, I'm sure on this calculator there's an easier way to do it, but for now I'm gonna play it safe. And we multiply that by matrix B. And once you're familiar with the commands, you know, you can do it really easily. There we go. And we get the answers we retrieved earlier. Hmm. So this is my first time using that kind of calculator specifically. I myself have the Casio FX 115ES Plus. So this one is a, has a notation I'm a little bit unfamiliar with, but it looks like this graphing calculator is really powerful and you can use matrices of many different rows and column lengths, like many different kinds of dimensions you can use it for. And yeah, like, um, instead of using substitution, if you're allowed a calculator like this, and even, even, it doesn't have to be a graphing one, it can be one that's not in graphing but still has the matrix options, you can solve these 2x2 two two equations really fast. As well, you can even solve their, you'll also get, in your upper years, maybe a few 3x3 three three matrices, and you can solve them really quickly just using this easy option. So I hope you found that video helpful. In the future, I'll be making some more videos. If there's any kind of topic you want me to cover, feel free to leave it below in the comments and I'll get to it. Thanks.